the Joe Rogan experience. When you think of human evolution, do you ever stop to think, what are we going to be like a yeah. million years from now if we do survive? What Have you ever done this sort of thought experiment where you say, okay, if things keep going the same way, right. we used to be very strong and very hairy, and we're getting pro you know progressively softer as we don't need to use our bodies as much. Our brains are getting larger. Our heads yeah. are getting bigger. Do you, do you do that sort of thought experiment to see what we're going to become? And Not in a systematic scientific way because the – process is so fraught with incredible detail that I think it's hard for anybody, even experts in evolutionary biology, to really tell us anything that will hold water, that's really predictive. But on a general level, yeah. I mean, because, I, you know, people often wonder, why is it that we haven't been visited by aliens, right? This is right. a thing that comes up whenever you're talking about other life inside the I was universe. I'll get to that in a minute. With yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but 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 the answer to that could be quite straightforward. Nobody out there cares about us because we're so ill developed. We're so young on the cosmic scene that there's nothing interesting for them to find here on planet Earth. So to me, there's a natural explanation for why there can be stuff out other life out there, and yet they don't hang out around planet Earth just the way we don't hang around an anthill to try to have a conversation with you know what's going on inside that particular structure. I buy that argument the least. You because, do? Really? Yeah, okay. because we're interested in butterflies. Butterflies are so boring. We're, we're interested in moles. We're, we're interested in, you but know, interested in, in, squirrels. In, in, we're interested in them for very specific reasons, sure. right? So typically we're interested either because we want to see the evolutionary development that yields this particular life form or because there's a general curiosity about how this object is put together. If these other beings are so far beyond us that those kinds of taxonomy questions are no longer of any interest, then hanging around here may not hold anything thing for them to uh, make the journey and stick around long enough for us to notice. I, I don't buy that again for two reasons. Okay. One, because why would we assume that they're so far beyond us that they wouldn't be interested in these talking monkeys with thermonuclear weapons who dominate an entire planet? Yeah. That would be fascinating. If right, we found I, some planet right. somewhere where people are, the, the politicians all lie to themselves, everyone gets video through the sky, <laughs> they fly in metal tubes that hurl over the uh, over the oceans, right. they pollute the oceans and eat all the fish. Like these people are fucking crazy. Yeah, we've got to go there and check this out. But but imagine that this civilization, the notion of lording over a planet, is like us talking about you know the ant lording over a grain of sand. So they may be uh, uh, galactic as opposed to planetary in their hegemony, mm -hmm. and the notion of some little tiny rock orbiting some nondescript star in the suburbs of this completely ordinary galaxy off there on the side may not have the kind of pull that you imagine that it does. Oh, I disagree. We think it's interesting when we see a chimp use a rock to open up a nut. You know, we, we yeah. think it's interesting that, you know, there's there's uh, an amazing photograph of an orangutan that's spearfishing. Have you ever seen it? Uh, I have seen that, actually. Really yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Right. No, it is. He learned it from people, apparently, but yeah. it's still interesting nonetheless. Right. But I don't think 100 years from now we're going to be as interested in really? these kind of qualities or 1,000 years from now or 10,000 years from now. Well, why so, would we assume that these things that come here from another planet are more than 10,000 years? Well, advanced? that's a good – that's a, that's a very good question. And I think the, the answer to that is we – Look at the history of the cosmos until today, and it's, say, let's just call it our universe to be concrete, 13.8 mm -hmm. billion years. And we look at life on planet Earth, and it's, you know, a handful of billions of years old. So in a handful of billions of years, you can go from some complex molecules to human beings. I like how you say it like it's not that long. <laughs> it's, it, well, it's, not, it, well, it's not that long because, know. you know, imagine that life began – a few billion years earlier mm -hmm. uh, in some other system, you know, uh, stars and galaxies, they were starting up, you know, a billion years after the Big Bang. So it could be that life in other worlds has a head start on us by a few billion years. And we know what can happen in a few billion years. It can take us from single cell to us. Sure. And you can imagine from a few billion years from now into the future, it could be radically different. So to say it's 10,000 years ahead of us, that to me would be the unexplained coincidence. How unlikely that they started and we started within 10,000 years in the span of billions of years. 
That seems unlikely to Is me. It, does it seem unlikely when you're talking about the infinite size of the universe and there's perhaps an infinite number of Brian Greens sure. out there talking to an infinite numbers of me? Good, good point. Good point. So, so you're absolutely right. We're, we're almost guaranteed if the spatial expanse of the universe is infinitely large, yes. that there are going to be places where it's within 10,000 years sure. of us. But those are going to be a very small number compared to the places where it's not 10,000 years. Is that true, or would it be an infinite number of them? Well, it'd not be a infinite, small but, number but at all. But there are different kinds of infinities. So you mean you know? in the space of yeah. the exact scope of the universe itself, a small number, relatively speaking, to where we are yeah, physically? So I would, well, I would say it slightly differently. I'd say look at a finite-sized ball in this large spatial okay. expanse. So everything is finite now. So let's get a five billion light, light year, year ball. ball. Right, okay. and within that ball, the number that are differing from us by 10,000 years would be very, very small mm. compared to the number differing from us by, say, a billion years or a couple of billion years. So then Simply by the, 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 the law of numbers, if we imagine that there are random processes that are generated. Now, there could be some physical principle that prevents life from emerging before, say, four billion years ago. Mm. And if that's the case, and we're not aware of that principle, then you'd be absolutely right, that we'd all be roughly at the same starting point, and there's no reason to suspect that they would be so far ahead of us. Um, but I don't know of any such principle. But yeah, yeah, you almost have a reductionist view of this, right? Like, you, you, so if you had a guess, if you had $100 to bet, has alien life ever observed us? You would say no. Well, by observed, you mean could they just turn a big telescope in our direction and gather some radio waves, you know. Uh, uh, but, but yes, I, I would take that bet because, frankly, we've only been generating radio waves for the last, you know, 70 years. So it's only a 70 light year ball around us. And within that small radius, very unlikely that there's been some alien world that's examining us. So it would have to be something that would be able to recognize our signal and visit us. Right. But don't we look at observable planets and solar systems and discover Goldilocks planets? We do. And we examine those planets from f vast distances away. Yes. And wouldn't you assume that a, a life form that is perhaps thousands of years more advanced than us with the exponential increase in yes. technology, I mean, if they ever got to the point where we are, that they would see these Goldilocks planets as well and recognize that Earth is one of them? Yes. However... If they are so far away, they're going to be examining Earth as it was mm, hundreds right. of thousands or millions or billions right, of years ago. Right. So if you truly want them to be examining us in the sense of human presence on planet Earth, then it's a much more difficult proposition to imagine that they've actually been doing that. Is it possible there's another way to examine things where you're not hampered by the speed of light? Oh, not not, not no. that I know of. I mean, any signal in the right. world that we're aware of is restricted by a the special theory of travel. By, by the speed of travel, which is... Yeah. Uh, now, look, there's quantum entanglement, mm -hmm. which is a strange property of the quantum world in which distant objects can behave as if they are one yes. and in some sense respond instantaneously to an influence in one location at a distant location, no matter how far apart they are. But that isn't really observing that more that's more realizing correlations between physical properties at widely separated locations but i'm not aware of a means of leveraging that to actually observe what's happening in some distant location even if you do have quantum entangled particles <laughs>